Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment and in today's video we're going to be talking about buying a CO2 laser. Let's get into it. To help you on your journey to buying a CO2 laser, I have created a free guide that will walk you through some questions you need to ask yourself. You can download that guide in the link in the description below. And it is a fillable PDF, so you can do it on a computer or you can print it out and fill it out by hand. I would recommend that if you're going somewhere to look at machinery that you print out a copy and take it with you so that you have all of these questions during that experience. Now this will ask you some questions about what you want the machine to do and I will walk through what this guide has, but that kind of gives you some information as to what you will be downloading. Now this video is sponsored by Epilogue Laser. It's who I use for all of my laser equipment. I have had a great experience with them, but they are the reason why I was able to spend the time to create this free guide for you to download. So if you are interested in their lasers, check them out at epilogelaser.com. And without further ado, let me show you the guide. Once you've downloaded the guide, you can open it up in a PDF reader. Now I use the Adobe Acrobat tools. That is how I created the fillable PDF. Once you download it, it is about 13 pages. It is that long because it has a lot of information and questions that you need to ask yourself but it also has room for you to take notes, do your own comparisons, and be able to make a decision on which laser you want to move forward with. So the front page of this is just kind of the title. The second page is a little bit about what this guide is intended for, as well as my contact information if you have any questions. If you do have any questions along the way of buying a laser, feel free to reach out to me. I will do my best to answer whatever questions you may have. Next, there's going to walk you through a few questions about why do you want to buy a laser? Now, some of us, when we go to buy a laser, we get kind of enamored with, oh, I've seen other people build a successful business. That's why I want to do it. I encourage you to think through this process a little more deeply not only why you want to buy a laser, but who you're going to target, what problems are you going to solve in the marketplace, how are you going to stand out from other laser owners. This will make sure that you have a solid foundation to build your laser business from. The next section is all about what do you need it to do. In this case, it's going to ask you questions about the max thickness of material you plan to cut, I would say most laser owners are doing eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch, depending on the kind of projects. It will also ask you about the largest single piece you plan to machine on, what kind of design software you want to use, do you want to do cylindrical items, and what materials do you plan to use as well. The reason these are important is your wattage is going to help determine your max thickness of material. And I've included some reference articles below that will help you answer some of those questions. A couple more things I want to mention. Most design softwares can be used with any laser. Uh, it just depends on how you translate it over to that laser. If you want to do cylindrical items, you have to make sure that the machine has the capability. There are some lasers that do not have the capability to do cylindrical items. So make sure you're watching out for that if that is important to you. You also wanna make sure that you know what materials you want to work with, or at least some idea. If you want to engrave a lot of metals, a CO2 laser may not be the best fit for you. A fiber laser might be better. If you want to do materials more like wood and acrylic and glass and things like that, that's where a CO2 laser is going to be a better fit. You can do some metals on a CO2 laser, but you might have to have some kind of coating to be able to do those. The next page walks through what do you need it to do? Are you going to be cutting a lot or engraving a lot? If you want engraving, speed is going to be your friend. If you want to do cutting, wattage is going to be more of your friend. Both are definitely good things to have, but I would say wattage is going to shine more on the cutting side and the motors and speed of engraving are going to shine more on that engraving side. 
Then you need to walk through what kind of business you want to make. Do you want to do business to consumer where you might only be doing you know, one or two of an item sometimes, or do you want to do business to business where you might get that higher volume type of stuff? And the reason volume is important is if you're going to be engraving a lot, you need a machine that is capable of doing production level work and not something where you're going to have to babysit it. So think through those things while you're making this decision. One of the questions I want you to ask yourself is, do you plan on having customers bring in their own item for you to engrave? I am guilty of doing this. A lot of other people are guilty of doing this as well. I highly encourage you not to do it because it leads to a lot of headaches. The more you know about what you're engraving, the more you know about the quality, the more you know about the source, the easier it is to machine that and sell it to a customer. If they're bringing in something random, say, hey, I have this $80 bottle of whiskey I want you to engrave, will you do that? It puts a lot of pressure on you to engrave something that you only have one shot at and make sure that it doesn't mess up. Same goes for things like iPhones or iPads, things like that. If you choose to do that and you want to be able to engrave things for customers, just know that you'd be getting yourself into those situations where they're going to bring you random stuff. They're going to want it engraved on the spot, most likely, and they're going to want it for a cheap price. Just think through all of that before you decide that you want people to drop off their own items. I also want you to think through what will your workflow look like? When I say workflow, I mean anywhere from design to shipping. So you're going to design it, you're going to stage it, machine it, clean it up, pack it, ship it. Usually that involves a flow line. Most of us working out of garages don't have a flow line set up, but if you do have the space, I highly encourage you have some kind of flow in your shop because if it needs to go from a laser to a UV printer or to some other piece of equipment that you're not bouncing all around the shop and you know where you're gonna sit that machine and how you're gonna hook it up. As we move on to the next page, what features are important to you? Do you need it to have onboard memory? Do you need to be able to save jobs to the machine? There's a bunch of questions here that I want you to think through. There's ones for lenses. There's ones for if you want a camera, if you're gonna do print to cut, all of that kind of stuff. The reason that all of these questions are here is because these are the questions that typically differentiate the machines. Not all machines are gonna have a registration dot camera. Not all machines are going to have a material pass through. Some machines are glass tube, DC lasers. Some machines are RF metal tube lasers, and there are reasons for choosing each one. And then there's also max Z height. Some machines only have a two inch height. Some have, you know, 12 or more. It just depends on the type of work you're going to be doing and what is important to you. Next is the overall user experience. So these are things like, do you need to be connected via USB, Ethernet, or wireless? Are you using a Mac? Are you using a PC? Do you want it to be a plug and play that you can just come in, turn it on, go? Or do you like tinkering with things and figuring out how they work? The hobbyist machines are gonna be more of that tinker side. The professional machines are gonna be more of that set it and forget it plug and play. It also dives into the details of, do you need training on site? Do you want to be able to see it in person? Do you, what kind of warranty do you want it to have? What kind of support do you want? Frankly, some manufacturers don't have any support. Uh, some have really great support. Just kind of depends on the experience that you're looking to have. And being honest with yourself about what you might need from either a community or the manufacturer themselves. Because even though it may look like a really good deal from a dollar perspective to get a machine, on the back end, if you're having a terrible experience from the manufacturer, that can be a real downer and make you wanna get rid of it. The next page is a laser brand directory. So I've sectioned these off into three different categories. There's an industrial laser brands, small business laser brands, and hobbyist laser brands. You can debate these all you want. You can tell me I'm wrong and that's fine, but
But these are the categories that I've seen over the past 10 years and the companies that kind of fit within those categories. So as new ones come into the market, these are always changing. But what you want to look at is industrial lasers. These are lasers that I have seen in production environments for Fortune 100 companies. And they are pumping through eight hours of work every day. Actually, half the time they're running 24 hours a day. Those are the Epilogue, Trotec, and Universal type brands. The next is small business lasers. These are still capable of doing production work. Typically, you're talking about you know a small business that's running eight hours a day. Those are going to be your Aon, your AP laser, your Boss laser, Full Spectrum, Radian, Thunder. There are probably many more, but those are kind of the brands to look into. The difference between the industrial ones and then those small business lasers are typically I'm seeing the industrial ones are the metal RF tube lasers. The small business ones are those uh, glass tube lasers that require the chiller equipment. Some of those brands are starting to come out with some RF tube lasers. We will see how they stack up over time. And then the hobbyist lasers are ones that yes, you can make products and yes, you can sell them, but the speeds just aren't there to be able to do production level work. These would be things like the Glowforge, the Omtech, X-Tool, multiple diode lasers. Now, Omtech is starting to get better at that, but we will see how that all pans out in the future. But this page will give you a bit of a breakdown of those types of machines and help you categorize them for yourself. Next up is the trade show directory. If you've never been to a trade show, what it is, is a bunch of companies will come to a location. A bunch of them will be in places like Las Vegas. There's a lot in California. Atlanta is a good hub for one, Orlando. Those are good examples. Some of the ones that I've been to in the past are Printing United, the APA Expo, which happens in Vegas in February, the ISA or International Sign Expo, uh, the Graphics Pro Expo. There's an International Manufacturing Technology one. I've never been to that one, but I've heard it's good. And then AWFS and IFS, which is more of a woodworking show. So you will see laser manufacturers present here, but there will also be other things. So the signage show might have lighting companies and printing companies and wrap companies and things like that. The woodworking show would have CNC manufacturers, table saw companies, all of that kind of stuff. So it really depends on not only where you can go location wise, but also what other types of equipment you'd like to see at the same time. But trade shows are a great way to see machinery in person. Ask a bunch of questions to the reps from the companies while you're there. And if you take this guide to there and you answer the questions on the spot, they can actually help walk you through what machine would best fit your needs based on their product lines and help you narrow it down. The next few pages are going to be working charts for you to use. So I put together a comparison chart where you pick the top three lasers you are interested in. The reason I narrowed it to top three is because you can compare forever if you have more than that. If you only give yourself three to look at, then it will help you narrow it down much quicker. It will walk you through a lot of the same questions. So as you're walking through the questions up higher in the guide, you can actually take notes for each laser here and you can fill them out. Because this is fillable, you can make this very specific. So you can say Epilogue Fusion Pro 36, for example. Um, you could also put in your wattage. So say that you want an 80 watt working area, you want 24 by 36. So those are some details of the machines and then you can fill them all out and compare them that way. This actually spans a couple of pages because it has all of the questions basically duplicated in a way where you're going to answer that for each laser that you are looking at. And as we scroll down, the last fillable page is all about what features you like about each of those lasers because not all of them are gonna have the same features. 
one laser might have this one thing you really like, the second one will have a different thing you really like, and then the third one will have another thing that you really like. It's going to be hard to find every single feature in one machine, so you're going to have to compromise on something in most cases. And then the last thing is which laser is best for you. This one is forcing you to make that decision of which laser do I want to move forward with, and here it is written down. So hopefully this guide will be very helpful to you in making that decision. The last page I have is a reference page. So I have put a few articles here that I think are very useful. One on machine wattage and why you might need the wattage that they're recommending. It will show you thicknesses of material that you might want to cut and what wattage might be best for that. There's also a material compatibility chart that shows you what kind of materials are compatible with CO2 lasers. There's one about laser lenses and why you might want a different size. There's an article on laser safety. Not all lasers are the same laser class. There are different classes of lasers that require different safety requirements. So make sure you know what you're getting into when it comes to the safety aspect. And then there's a little bit of information about the camera types within a laser, an overhead versus a registration dot camera and the difference in those. And then if you are interested in going forward with an epilogue, I did put a referral link where you can fill out information and get more information on the epilogue machinery. But I believe that this guide will be super helpful in helping you make a decision. I really wish I had this guide when I was buying a laser because I would have avoided buying a laser that didn't really fit me when I first started. And I kind of just compromised on almost everything that I really wanted to buy a laser um, at the time. If I had this guide, I think I would have done a much better job of getting what was right for me earlier on in my journey. You can download this guide for free. I will put the link in the description below. Make sure to check that out. If you have any questions along the way, please let me know and I will be happy to help you in any way that I can. I do know that buying a laser can be kind of a stressful situation, but also a daunting decision because when any amount of money like this is involved, sometimes you kind of have that analysis paralysis and you don't end up moving forward at all because you don't know where to start. So I'm hoping that this will really guide you on that journey and help you make a decision no matter which brand you choose. But I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. And be sure to check out my Instagram at Maker Experiment where I share things along the way. And don't forget to check out epiloguelaser.com because without them, most of my videos wouldn't even be possible. They have been a great partner to work with and I appreciate everything that they have done for me. But with that, thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you in the next one.